Hey everybody, welcome to the Crit House. I'm Jeff Larson, and we are continuing our My Five series on the Crit House, where we talk to photographers and photo professionals about five images that have some meaning to them, have influenced them in some way. And today we have Jay Sibylla Smith. You know, you know, Sibylla, I, I should have asked, how do you do you like Jay Sibylla Smith or Sibylla? How do you like to be called? Most people go with Sib, S Y B. That's that's much easier for me. <laughs> <laughs> and don't look when you're trying to pronounce it because the Y's really make it a challenge. Pretend cool. they're eyes. Oh, I'm going to make it easy and make it Sib. So perfect. Sib, thanks for joining us. Uh, so Sib is a curator. She is an educator and a consultant as well. And she works with photographers to help them to hone photo project ideas, develop their portfolios and create exhibitions and also complete book proposals. Um, now, Sib, you have a you have a creative framework that you have the, and a podcast as well that's called Concept Aware. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? What's what what do you do that can help the people who are watching this program? Sure. Um, the tagline to Concept Aware is how you see and why it matters, and that's actually the foundational basis. So the framework is applicable. It's also something that can be entered into at any stage in a career from a new professional to an established artist. The beginning is really getting the lenses that we see ourselves, the world has been filtered through lenses that we all have. Um, awareness of that is essential. I think it's a responsibility of a visual storyteller um, to be aware of the lenses that you walk with. I talk about the creative process because it can be so overwhelming and that there are creative choices at so many junctures. So I pull out and try to bring those junctures to your awareness so that you see, oh, this is a choice. This is not make or break my project. This is not the be all end all. And then the last part of concept aware, which I bring in the podcast because I'm always thinking about how people see. I have some workshops coming up. I have um, introductions to my podcast guests because as I speak on the podcast, I don't say this is Jeff and this is where he's you know, been educated and what he does and where he's been and exhibited, that's all news. Uh, people can get it elsewhere. I enter the work with the artists that I interview and, and by reading how I enter the work, you will get aspects of concept aware. So yeah. I have an intros book available and I'm in a book proposal process for the whole Megillah of a book on concept aware. Good luck with that. I hope it goes well. So Thank you. Um, you are joining us to talk about five images that you um, have somehow influenced you. Tell us about like what you went through in deciding what those five images are going to be. Is that hard? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, only because I have a large library, both in physical books, but also in imagery in my head. And I follow a lot of people and my joy is watching the evolution of people over time. Um, so yeah, whittling it down to five, I initially get frustrated, but this was honestly easy in the sense, one parameter, I knew I wanted to do all women. Mm -hmm. uh, that is because I have a propensity to affect gender parity in photography and specifically because photographers entered gender wise at the same time. And our acquisition, exhibition, research, et cetera, is woefully behind. So Sib, your first uh, image comes from Lillian Bassman. So talk about this image and why it has some importance for you. It is foundational for me. I could tell you where I was when I saw this image. It stopped me in my tracks. It was decades ago. And I officially became a Lillian Bassman groupie as a result. She fascinated me. And then to hear her seminal import in magazine culture, um, people do not know her at the level that they should. Um, she was pals with Dick Avedon, as she would say, she gave him his first cover for um, Junior Bazaar. She was an art director. She came in as a graphic designer. She taught herself and made this stylistic dodge and burn 
aspect to her photography. She used George, George Hoynigen Hune's darkroom. Um, and she was not given the leg up that her male counterparts were. She was in her mid 80s when she was rediscovered. Um, and I won't go into detail because it's a fascinating story of how that happened. And she re-entered. She's a real bridge between fashion and photography. And I have a background in fashion. Um, and and she's my girl because she is doing more um, with an image in a way that I resonate with. I have a visceral reaction to how she works with the female form. And I've called her to her face, the Georgia O'Keeffe of photography, because you have that ability. She gave us women from a women's point of view. Your second image from Anastasia Samalovia. I think I've mispronounced that. It's a mouthful. I've gotten better. It's Samalyova. You were okay. close. Yeah. Um, Anna, as she's also uh, known, um, is originally from Russia and um, studied architecture. So her background was she was studying at the intersection of architecture, sustainability, um, and got frustrated with that field for the speed at which it could actually cause an impact. And she was photographing her models when she realized that photography could get her where she wanted to go quicker. She was photographing her architectural models. Correct. Got yeah. It. So this idea that she was taking a 3D um, object and making it 2D. And because of her spatial perspective background, she brought that lens to her work. Uh, one of her books is called Flood Zones and she uh, lives in Miami and she gives us a look at the, mm, <laughs> for lack of a better term, active denial of this idea of what Florida says and what Florida is in terms of being in a danger zone. Um, what I love about the way that she shoots is she collages in camera. These are not staged, these are not post-production. In this mm. image, you'll see a reflection of her. You could talk about this as a self-portrait. It's actually an ad, an advertisement in a reflection. She uses reflection a lot, she uses architecture a lot. And from the Florida's work, she did, um, she did flood zones, then she did Florida's, which I cover on the podcast um, with David Campany uh, comparing her and Walker Evans and their way of um, looking at America, how, how both Walker Evans and in this case, Anna are showing us to ourselves. The fact that she looked at Florida like that instigated a larger project. And I just spoke to her on my podcast. Uh, it's two weeks ago. It's Image Cities. And she was able to win an award and went to 17 cities globally to get that type of view that she gave us for Florida. Yelena Yamchuk, your third photographer. Yes. Yelena Yamchuk is from um, the Ukraine. She lives in Brooklyn. And I came across her book, Odessa, right before it got shortlisted for the um, Paris, the Aperture Paris Photo Awards. And I was a bit dumbstruck. I, I think portraiture is so hard, hands off to anyone who loves it and does it because it's hard. And this ability, like the image I'm showing, she's a drone. Where is she? She is this invisible presence in an intimate moment. Her use of the light, uh, the capture that is here in this image is like a breath. And, and it's like a, a, a beautiful, beautiful synergy that she's able to meet with her subject. And lastly, um, I was interviewing Yelena the week after the Ukrainian invasion, mm -hmm. and it certainly gave me pause and it did for her as well. And she called people that were in this book that were literally under siege mm -hmm. and said, what do I do? And they said, go forward. We want the world to know who we are. So this has a very, very poignant place in, in my history. Justine Kurland, your fourth image. 
Justine, wow. I bow down to what she has been able to do in her career in terms of being part of the process, you know, where that life and process blend and you get this really incredible oeuvre and it, and it moves through. If you look at her past work, this one is justifiably a activist enactment. Um, this is part of her book that is called SCUM, S-C-U-M-B, which stands for the Society for Cutting Up Men's Books. Justine realized that her bookcase was filled with a lot of white men photographers that seemingly were the masters of the canon and uh, a little bit their way or the highway, or let me show you the road. And she cut up her books. There's over 150 of them. And so she took an exacto and made her own images, a real reclamation. And if you read about her process, it's not, I mean, it was transgressive, definitely, and intentional, but it wasn't snarky. It wasn't to say you don't rate. It was to say, hey, you know, move over, open your yeah. eyes yeah. and get the real narrative here. She had a real repartee with different male photographers that, you know, some people sent her a book and said, please rip mine up. Other ones <laughs> said, can I buy a print? Um, there was engagement and other ones didn't want to have anything to do with it. Well, I, I gotta, I gotta say as a older middle-aged white man, um, you, you're, you're opening uh, discussions of photography that um, my generation doesn't listen to. I certainly have not heard a lot of, so thank you for that. Um, mm -hmm. A great discussion and well-stated. Your fifth image is powerfully colorful. Talk about this one. Uh, Ada Moliné, another woman I bow down to. So glad that there's so much good work being done. And for Ada, she has really moved forward the photographic image on the continent of Africa, because of course, in addition to being white and male, we have a very Western, very um, uh, predominant way of looking at photography. If you think about it, it's between you know England and France who fight over the beginnings, right? Yeah. But that's not where it has been. You know, it was in Asia, it was in Africa all along. So what I love about Ada is she's another woman, as several of the women that I just discussed roll in context, concept, and content in their imagery. It is layered. Ada in this particular work is really talking, uh, it's part of a project, this is called The Road of Fire, but it's part of a larger body of work called The Road of Glory. And it actually relates to hunger through history. And this particular image happens to reference Vietnam. And so what you see behind her is the crops that were ruined by Agent Orange. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's this orange. And she uses herself, this is a self-portraiture, um, in, the, in the body of work. I applaud her. And again, she's entering the work. I am entering the work aesthetically. It's a visually intriguing image. Yeah. Um, and composition, the uh, framing, the graphics, the use of color, those are all tools being used as well. Um, and I just love work that brings you in and hits you over the head. And this one does. Th thank you, first of all. First of all, you speak incredibly eloquently about um, the image and thoughtfully. Um, so thank you for that. We, we want people to have conversations about photography and not just like photographs because YouTube, it's a lot of, a, you know, let's look at the equipment or we'll look, you know, we'll edit this image and, and it's, it's an image piece, but to think about photography more broadly. Um, and as, as a person who comes in, as I said before, I'm not an educated photographer. I've never gone to school for it. I've taken a couple of workshops to learn to become a better photographer, but I have a long way to go. And the things that you do um, through your concept of where are things that, that I need to understand better. And I know that there's a, there's a, a world of photographers out there who would benefit from understanding more deeply their own, uh, lens. 
as you mentioned, um, and understanding their perspective and how that affects um, the, the work that they're putting out. So for all of you out there, thank you for watching The Crit House. I want to say if you are interested in participating at some point, you are certainly welcome to show your five images. If you choose on Instagram, you can use the hashtag my five and then tag us at The Crit House, and we'll perhaps have you on to talk about your five images as well. Jay Sibylla Smith, such a pleasure to have you on the program. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. And thanks for all, all of you for watching The Crit House as well.